Hello everybody, I am Phoenix and today I'm going to be talking about respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, respect. And I'm going to be talking about respect in all its different forms. So starting with relationships, alright, a lot of people these days, especially guys in a lot of places, start, you know, showing a lot of disrespect to their lovely lady friends and their beloved ones. Um, getting all possessive, trying to control them, tell them what to do, you know, getting paranoid about them living their own life and having male friends and whatever. Respect and relationship, you know, the idea of that is you're respecting each other for being individuals, for being their own person, having their own life, uh, their own journey, their own friends as well, and various things that they want to develop in their life. When you unite with somebody, it's not a matter of leaning on them and, and becoming, you know, enmeshed and so that you know you control their actions just as much as you control your own just because you're with somebody doesn't mean that they are stuck to you or held to you by or bound to you by any obligation or chain uh they're still a free person and they're only with you by their free will by their choice if you try to manipulate or coerce a girl to be with you or intimidate her to stay with you then that isn't even a real relationship that's not even real love and i don't know how anything you can get from that kind of relationship can be fulfilling unless you just want a hole to fuck, just a play thing. And if that's all you want, then you wouldn't mind forcing a girl to stay with you, even if she doesn't really want to be with you, because it's all just about the sex. Otherwise, you know, there's, people gotta learn to start respecting each other more, and hey, there's gonna be things that your partner does, or someone you're seeing that you don't like. It might make you feel, you know, upset, or anxious, or afraid, or angry, but that's your problem. The way you react to situations, they're, they're allowed to do what they want within reason. They're allowed to have their own life. And if you can't handle it, that's something to do with you. And that's your inadequacy issues. That's your insecurity that you've got to deal with. Moving on to respect for parents. All right, so I see you know a lot of kids, uh, you know, when they start develop, going through teenagehood and, and developing their grasp of life and gaining control of the schemes, and they're able to like ass assert their authority more, um, a lot of them will start, you know, disrespecting their parents and throwing their weight and they might even re resent the parents for controlling them, being too over controlling, setting all these limits and rules for being assholes when really they're just trying to do their job and they're trying to raise their child properly and teach them that the world is about limits, it's about moderation, it's about respect and it's about obligations and following your duties. And, and looking after yourself, you know, and a lot of children can't see this and it's understandable, it's only in hindsight, quite often, you know, when my sister had children herself in her late 20s, she, she went to my mom and she said, I'm so sorry, you know, now I understand, now I see where you came from. And it took her having children to really respect that much all the struggles and all the energy that my mom went through and that she put into raising her children. So I think it's important that even if you disagree with your parents or it doesn't seem that like they see you eye to eye, generally, you know, some parents are just rotten, all right? But generally, parents have you in their best interest. And even if you don't agree with their methods and their way of going about things and their attitude about what you do, look at their intention and realize that you are lucky to even have them there at all. Some, some children, some people don't even have that privilege to have their parents still there. So be grateful and show respect for your elders because one day, if you don't respect your elders, you're just going to train your children to disrespect you. You know what I'm saying? Moving on. So now we're going to be talking about friends, respecting friends and the differences that friends have, differences of opinion, differences of lifestyle. It's the same thing with the relationships. When you have two people walking their separate paths and they decide to link hands and go for a skip every now and then, you know, they occasionally unite and hang out and share time and space. They're doing so not out of obligation that neither of the people owe each other anything and they're not bound to any rules or any expectations. It's all just happening as it happens because two people mutually wish to spend some time together. So. I think, you know, respect, it's, it's a big thing, respecting that, okay, there might be some things your friends do that you disagree with, and sometimes if it's so morally effed up, then you might want to distance yourself from that person, because you are what you hang around with, and so you don't want to be hanging around with birds of a certain feather if you don't want to grow those feathers yourself, or develop those same shady colours, you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, I think generally we should look for the good 
that our friends provide in our life. They might not be perfect, they might irritate us from time to time, but every single person has something to bring to the table and just appreciate that. And if you don't like the rest, you don't have to take that on board, you know? And if it's annoying, suck it up. People aren't perfect. Stop expecting them to be, especially your friends. So now moving on to colleagues, all right? So at the end of the day, I see a lot of people. Personally, I'm lucky, like generally everywhere I've worked, um, people have shown me respect for the most part and they show each other respect for the most part. There are a few which just show disrespect and, and you know, they might just insult you or, or gossip or get angry at you when you're just trying to throw some suggestions or just trying to interact in any way and they just get frustrated. Look. At the end of the day, most people don't love their job. They, they would rather be somewhere else, doing something else with other people, you know, with someone else. Uh, but at the end of the day, we uh, all have our obligations. We all need to pay for the roof and the food and for survival. And so I think we should all to, we ought to respect our fellow colleagues a lot more. Uh, the fact that, you know, we are all bound by obligation to carry out whatever duties to get by um, we're all in the same wagon in that respect. It's not out of choice that we subject ourselves to various environments, doing things we don't want to do. It's out of necessity. And so really, we should be able to respect each other more for that reason, that we're all going through the struggle together, and that we're all forcing ourselves and pulling ourselves by those bootstraps to do shit we don't want to do because it needs to be done. You know, we should just get together, just do our job, leave all the personal shit out of it and respect each other for just being there and for doing what needs to be done. Because we can relate to how much it sucks. So if anything, we should try to bring our colleagues up, not try to bring them down. All right, and the same goes, you know, now moving on to strangers, to strangers, you know, everyone's got their life that they have to live. It's a job in itself, you know, and just as your life is full of its ups and downs and you've had your challenges and you've had all the strife, you know, and crisis in your life, everybody has that. All right, in their own different way. And it's easy to judge from an outside perspective and compare other people to yourself and go, well, they haven't really gone through as, as much as me. Or they have, but it's not as bad. Or they, they had a better upbringing, they could deal with it better. At the end of the day, your problems are the biggest problems to you. And so are mine, they're my biggest problems. Why would anyone else's problems be bigger than my problems? I'm experiencing my problems directly. So obviously I'm gonna feel them as being more potent and more relevant to me, because they're my problems. Just like you've got yours. I think we've got to respect each other for the fact that we're all in this together, whether it be a job, whether it be the job of life. We're all in life together, going through the ups and downs, out of obligation once again, because you know, this, this body, this is my occupation. My job is to live in it. You know what I'm saying? And you're the same, and everyone's got to do it. So it doesn't matter how we live our lives, the different, ideologies or religions or you know it doesn't matter you know as long as we don't impose ourselves onto others which is once again a sign of disrespect you know and just show the respect and really at the end of the day what is respect respect is recognizing how you wish to be treated uh what feels right what feels good for you and realizing that you're just one pigment in a painting made of many other pigments many other people and if you wish to be treated that way, you should treat them the same way too. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's realizing that you are just one piece of a bigger picture. Yeah? And really, the world extends beyond you. You know, it's easy to be selfish and look, prioritize your needs above other people. But at the same token, if you show respect and you just, even if, if you just realize, you know, it feels good to be treated this way. It feels good to live this way. I think we have a natural ability to empathize with other people the more that we can recognize our own needs and wants and appreciate our needs and wants. You know what I mean? People that have gone through tough times and a lot of pain in life can better respect other people and better relate to their situations and their pain. Whereas if you've had it easy, you haven't really had to focus on your needs and wants because you've just had everything catered for and supplied for you from a young age, you might not as easily empathize and recognize other people's shortcomings and lackings. You know what I'm saying? So I think we should respect, like I said, relationships, parents, friends, colleagues, strangers, uh, and genders. There's a lot of sexism going on. And you know, women complain about being objectified. Trust me, honey, 
it goes both ways. These days, it doesn't matter you get a hot girl in front of me. Not much is gonna happen because it's all up here and it's up here now for me. There's been so long, so many times, so many women that I've just fucked the time away with. You know, and, and to be honest, at the end of the day, looking back, I can honestly say I feel like I was an object in most of those transactions or interactions. And then it kind of repulses me now. Whenever I feel like, I'm with, if I'm with an older woman or some young hot hussy, you just, you know, whenever a girl says, oh, fuck me harder, oh, and, you know, they just want to go straight to doggy style. They don't give a shit about looking in the eyes or anything like that. You know, it's like, well, what? Isn't this about connection? Isn't this the fact you're doing it with me that kind of makes it a little bit special? The fact that we're sharing each other, we're opening up and being intimate and giving ourselves to each, to each other? Or is it just about pleasure, physical pleasure, and using me as a human dildo just to get you off? But except you can just lay there and let me do the work instead of you having to use your wrist or, 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 or the strain. So I think, you know, there's... It goes both ways, you know, women say men disrespect them, treat them like objects. Women all too often use boy, boys as toys, boy toys. And I think they're, they're, they're mutually as common these days since things have been changing. And even beyond the sex, even beyond the objectification, there's just respecting each other. And I'm not going to say that the woman has a certain role and men have their certain role, but there are general roles, generally, that each fall into on the masculine feminine scale and I think that instead of you know pointing and saying blah 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 and judging and telling someone even telling someone what their role is and that they have to stay on the feminine scale just because they're female and the stereotype is that they do those things even that's wrong you know it's no black and white anymore it's a mixture of gray so I think the male should respect the female's wishes to develop themselves and all their capacities on any end of the spectrum, and so should the females. Females should respect men if they want to be a bit more feminine, a bit more emotional, a bit more sensitive, creative, you know, if they want to start watering the garden and cooking the dinner. It works both ways. But at the end of the day, it's recognizing that, you know, each gender do have their differences. You know, women have their time of the month and men have their, well, their time of the month as well if they're with the woman. It's not the greatest period for them either, trust. But it's respecting these differences instead of just putting each other in boxes and then painting those boxes with with mean names and, and stupid expectations. Um, along the same lines as you know uh, gender discrimination, there's a racist racism and racial discrimination. The other day, to me, you know, I've got I've got two drawers in in one of my uh, closet, things of drawer closet. What do you call it? Wardrobe. And I've got two wardrobes. I got a lot of clothes. But I got two drawers dedicated completely to skulls and skeleton shirts. You know why I love skeletons so much and why I've got skull toys and masks? I've got about eight skull masks, you know, just littering my bedroom. You know why? Because if you look beneath the face and if you look beneath the skin and even the flesh, you will find just bone. And it's like that video, Hey Girl, Hey Boy by Chemical Brothers, when they're all just skeletons dancing in the, in the disco. Underneath this guy's a superficial form, we're all just bone and blood. Blood and bone and flesh. And it's harder to discriminate then, you know, we're all, we're all just the same. And that's why I actually love like electronica and music that doesn't have lyrics. You know, I go to Bushdorf, so festivals where they have this music playing and you have people from all backgrounds. Some of them might not even speak English, it doesn't matter because they're all connecting in the language of of love and music and we're all being we're all able to share the same dance floor and share a moment together and enjoy it even if we even if we come from different parts of the world or we look different or we speak different so at the end of the day we all have the ability to connect to what is essential to love to to laugh to cry to appreciate the good and bad in life um, and I think we ought to respect that you know respect that people are born in different parts of the world, it just so happens, and we can't really condemn people for being born anywhere else, nor should we. Why should we? Just because, what, that, that culture is different to ours? Yeah, there might be practices, there might be uh, certain rituals, you know, and ways of life that we disagree with, that other people adopt. But that doesn't mean that we should condemn them or, keep, or separate them and form this whole coalition mentality about it. 
It's just when it comes, it's the same as friends or anyone. Respect the differences which make us all unique, you know? And at the end of the day, a lot of these people, they, they taught this from the day up. So even if there were really bad differences, bad ways of life, if these people are raised into this environment with these people and it's they've been culturized to be like this, then how can you really blame them? How can you really discriminate against them and be racist? And how can you even be racist, even taking away from culture? Some people just don't like this, the color of someone's skin. What the fuck, man? If you ask me, I think white's way overestimated. You know, you look at you look at black guys, black guys make the best music, they know how to dance, they know how to fuck. You know, all the really good things in life, dancing and fucking and, you know, music, making music, they kick ass at. They they crank it when it comes to what's essential. White man, it's just oh, oh, look at me, I'm making money, oh, on the mouse wheel. Way to go, way to go. It's not as impressive. You know, if I couldn't be African, I'd probably choose to be Chinese next because Chinese culture is pretty cool. The Chinese are pretty cool. They got a good head on their shoulders, even if morally they're a little bit topsy turvy sometimes. You know, nothing is perfect. No one's perfect. <laughs> and Westerners can't talk when it comes to moral topsy turviness. Trust. So we should be the last to be pointing fingers unless we recognize that there are three fingers pointing back at us. All right, so moving on from races, now we're going to be talking about uh, gender preferences and how we discriminate and disrespect homosexuals and lesbians. Really? At the end of the day, love, it's an essential thing. You can't measure it in its physical form. You know, sure, love being an essential thing, it finds physical ways to express itself via a hug, via a kiss, via a soft caress or more. But at the end of the day, those physical acts and the physical touch of two people and, and the flesh of those people, that isn't love itself. That's just the demonstration of love, the expression of love, the face love wears. But what love is, is harder to describe, for it is ineffable. It's beyond description. And it's an invisible force which compels people to want to be together, to share the life together, you know, to experience intimacy and connection with each other on a level unprecedented, or on a level unparalleled to other, other people who we are just happy shaking hands with and leaving it at that. You know, when you love someone so much and you identify with who they are and that you appreciate them and you want to merge with them and form your own third entity, so to speak, in the form of a relationship, that's love. So it doesn't really matter what the physical form is, cock or pussy or breasts or whatever, chest hair, man, man, woman, woman, man and woman, he, she and he, she, any combination you can think of doesn't matter because love is formless. So it would be utterly retarded. It would, it would not make any sense at all and be completely illogical to measure love based on the physical forms of the people sharing love. It just makes no sense and it's just regressive. All right, now moving on because I am trying to cover respect in all its forms. Um, so we tend to respect a lot of the time when we go to places like McDonald's or we go to a restaurant somewhere or we go to get our car serviced or a bank, you know, or the dentist and, you know, even police, okay? All these various people doing their job and we show disrespect, whether it be because they're taking their time or whether it just be because they're under-resourced, understaffed, there's too many people and so it's taking longer than we would uh, ideally have it take for something to finish or something to get done. We can't really blame that on the workers. You know, at the end of the day, they're just doing their job. Just like you doing your job and you don't like when people give you shit for it and you're like, fuck my life. These people are the same. They're in the same boat. And I think we got to respect, even with the police, yeah, a lot of them are corrupt. A lot of them, you know, they can do awful things with impunity. You know, they can do whatever and get promoted, you know, for some of the horrible things they do. Like that, the Aborigine guy that got tasered heaps by like eight cops or something, and two of those cops got promoted, right? And they just kept tasering him for like 15 minutes or some shit. So yeah, it's not perfect across the board, but, but there are a lot of police that do the society a lot of good you know, they, they, they save a lot of people, they keep people out of your home, they get the nasty people off the street, 
And yeah, I don't agree with the judicial system. I don't believe chucking sick people in a box with other sick people makes them any healthier, because I just don't see the sense in that. But at the end, we realize the kind of shit that they deal with constantly. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not justifying or saying it's righteous that some of these guys are racist or exploit their power and get corrupt. But I'm saying that every single job that anyone has, has its pressures that it applies. And it has its protocol and it has its, its same routine shit that you just do over and over and over again. And every job, every person will get frustrated over time doing their job. And those pressures are going to end up pushing some kind of impression into them. And since it's so routine, it's really going to leave its mark. So it has an impact on people. It has an impact on their attitudes, on their way of seeing things, on their behavior, their choices. And although people are perfect and a lot of them do get corrupted, unfortunately, or pressured and to react the wrong way and become the wrong kind of person or just a hazardous person, I think we should respect people nonetheless. Um, yeah, sure, those people should get treated accordingly. But, you know, moving away from the real screwed up workers of the world, just any worker. If your fast food takes a bit longer to come through the windows, you would hope. Just because it's fast food doesn't mean it's bam, fast every time. You know, it's not, the, it's not the person handling the food and handling the cash, the clerk, generally, who is responsible for the, the, the speed of the food coming to you and being prepared and cooked and all that. They're not even responsible, so why blame them? It's like shooting the middleman or the messenger. It's pointless. They're totally unjustified. So yeah, yeah, that's that's my spell on respect. Um, oh, this thing's already restarted. That's all good. That's my thing on respect. Uh, I think, like I said, res respect is basically about recognizing your own innate feelings and your own needs and wants um, in terms of how you wish to be treated and what makes you feel good about yourself and you have a good self-esteem and feel have a healthy attitude. And I think the more that you can learn to respect yourself and recognize your needs, respect your needs, the more you can learn to respect other people. If you've got no respect for yourself, you're not gonna respect anyone else. You know, I've seen guys that will do all sorts of crazy, all sorts of horrible, all sorts of, you know, scary because they got no respect for themselves and they, they're the self-accepted assholes, so to speak, or bitches. So they'll just be vindictive and be evil and it doesn't really matter. So I think it really it's about recognizing what you're worth, recognizing you deserve a healthy, happy life. And then naturally, the more you respect that need of your own, you will naturally, through empathy, through mirror neurons or whatever, recognize that same need in other people and respect it. And that's all I got to say about that. So, respect, whether it be your parents, whether it be your lovers, your friends, your colleagues, yourself as a worker, uh, you know, various races, various genders, you know, homosexuals, lesbians, everyone deserves respect. Everyone deserves to live a healthy, happy life because that is what essentially, that is what essentially unites us. Are those same needs and wants to laugh, and smile, that is what essentially unites us. The same reality that we all cry whenever we do treat each other in other ways. Cheers for watching guys, and I'll catch you later.